At the rate we're going, we're not going to have anybody to work on our airplane. We're going to discuss that today in the hangar. Welcome to this special air venture edition of In the Hangar. I'm Christy Wong. And I'm Dan Milliken. We are at the Flying Eyes booth here at Air Venture, and it's been an exciting time. And at Flying Eyes, our sponsor, you can get 10% off if you use the discount code taking off all caps one word. They've got all sorts of choices here. And not only do, can you buy them at the booth here at Air Venture, you can get them online at flyingeyesoptics.com. That's right. We're also sponsored by Colton Mortgage. So coltontakingoff.com and Marshall Protective Services. These, our sponsors are all pilots. That's the way we like it. We like to keep it in the family and it's awesome. If you can support them, it helps support us. Okay, Christy, we've got a big problem with um, the mechanics are becoming rare. My, my mechanic just retired. Yeah, we. I'm having a hard time keeping up with airplane mechanics myself just for the Warrior. Uh, I mean, it's getting dismal out there. Okay, well, there is one state, the state of Oklahoma, that's doing something about it. Of all the states, it would be Oklahoma. Jeff Camp from the state of Oklahoma, you guys have a plan. You have something, a way to fix this. Thanks for being on the show, first of all. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate it. We okay. do. We so do what, what do you do and what is your plan? Um, so my title is the State Director of Aerospace and Defense, and what that means is aerospace and defense in the state of Oklahoma is so serious, we take it so seriously, we want to grow it, so much so that I have a team that is dedicated to coordinate all the aerospace and defense activities within the state. So whether that's businesses, universities, tech schools, pilots, mechanics, anything and everything. We like to say if it launches, flies, or blows up, not in that order that we have something to do with that. We need something like that in Texas. Something that blows up? Oh, that too. <laughs> Actually, we do have that. We've got like the SpaceX guys, well, don't we? Well, and speaking of which, how many states do have stuff like this? I know of three others personally. I know Arkansas, Texas, and Florida all have an individual. They have a, they have a Jeff. Not as cool as me. I was going to say, I need to know who the Jeff is in Texas. <laughs> I've not personally met uh, the Jeff in Texas. I have personally met the Jeff in Florida and the Jeff in Arkansas. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And so let's dive into, um, you know, we, we do have a problem. The problem is this. Mm -hmm. We're running out of pilots. We're running out of airplane mechanics, airplane techs. 100%. And, and uh, it's it's. It, the drought is only getting worse from here and because there's nothing, not much in the pipeline. What do we do to solve this problem? Well, I want to know, first of all, why is that happening? Oh, yeah, let's, let's go back. Why, why do we have a pipeline yeah. problem? Well, I think there's a, I think there are a bunch of different theories out there for sure. Um, and, but I personally, it's been my experience, have found that uh, I think that we've had a lack of imagination and a lack of implementation of STEM and our children. You know, we've, we've, we've relied far too long on other countries to do the innovation and, and exploration for us. You know, we've become a nation of, of consumerism, not to get political or anything like that, but I think that it's safe to say that, you know, uh, industrially, we are not who we used to be 50 years ago. And so, I mean, it, that makes a very logical process step for us. Our first step was, well, we don't have enough kids going into college or tech school to become a tech or an engineer. I was going to say, that actually makes a lot of sense. So I grew up in the 90s, and the big push I know when I was growing up was go to college, go to college, go to college. Absolutely. But you don't need to go to college to become a tech or to become an A&P, so, you know, which is an aircraft mechanic. Correct. Or even to be a pilot. Correct. And I think there's this push. We have so many people now that have gone to college, and they came out with business degrees and stuff like that. Or psychology. Psychology degrees, <laughs> basket weaving, whatever. Underwater basket weaving, my favorite. Right, exactly. <laughs> but so I think what it did was it put this stigma on people to go to these technical schools to get the a and mm -hmm. you know, to get that technician certification. Yes. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Yes. So you're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, 100%. And I, I myself actually am a victim of that same line of thinking. Same. You know, I, I went to college. Yeah. My, I graduated high school, and I, I experimented with one semester of college. Uh, decided that the institution no longer had anything to offer me at the moment, mm -hmm. so I joined the Air Force and became an engine mechanic. That's amazing, actually. But and then from there, you know, eventually I was like, hey, you know what? The next step, I want to, I need to do this. So I need now, I need a piece of paper. So I went on and did that, and then program manager, blah 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 blah. But the point is, is you know, micro. I love micro. Do you guys yes, watch micro? Absolutely. Just a hundred percent. You know, it. We used to think that 
if you didn't go to school and get a piece of paper, you weren't going to well, amount to something. Well, that's what they something. told us. Yes, yes. They our said, parents go, told us go these to things, college right? or else you're going to like right. live in a ditch or something, Correct. you know? Correct. Or dig the ditch. Or dig the ditch, right. Well, and uh, what's wrong with that, mm -hmm. honestly? Well, and now it's gotten to the point where, look, you can have a program manager for $45,000 a year, but you've got a person that can weld or fix your plumbing in your house. That dude's making oh 120 a year. Plumbers make so right? much money. So ironically, I was having this exact same conversation with my daughter. I'm getting ready to send her to college next week when we come back from the air show. She is going pro pilot. And Good for we her. had a very difficult conversation. What do you want? Do you want the college experience or do you want to get to work? Because if you want to get to work, mm -hmm. there are several big boys, American, United, who have academies. You can be done in 36 months, and you're guaranteed you're making 85 right out the gate, sitting in the right-hand seat. Oh, have her talk to me. I'm at a regional right now myself. I got you. I'm getting your number. <laughs> Absolutely. So she's 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 set on the on the college experience, which is good. Okay, do that. That's great. But the point is, is that that message, you don't need a piece of paper to make a really good life. Mm -hmm. That is what I've been preaching for the last three years in the state of Oklahoma. Well, let me ask you this. And it's working. Yes. I know this is totally a side note. Right. Is she paying for her college, or are you paying for her college? Okay, see, that's why. <laughs> if she had, I mean, this is just me. I'm just gonna go <laughs> off on my soapbox. If she had to invest in herself in that in that sense she might look at it from a different lens i i have a i have a sneaking suspicion we might reevaluate our strategy about 18 months in <laughs> nice. well okay so i'm going to tell you so i have a daughter as well yes i'm i'm older than i look and she as am i <laughs> yeah. she's i'm not <laughs> my daughter is 20 years old now yes i had her very young yes and when she um when she was getting ready to go to college you know, she didn't know what she wanted to do. She, again, she just wanted to go for the college experience. And I said, okay, then you're paying for it. Yeah. And now she's reevaluated mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. she realized, you know, it, you don't just go to go, you go with purpose. And yeah. if you don't have a purpose, you don't, you don't get to go. Exactly. Now your daughter has a purpose, but at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, well, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's no different than launching or fixing an airplane. Right. What is the mission? Right. Are we just going to screw off? Can I say that? Right. Are we just going to goof off? Okay, then fine. Let's just go goof off. But, but yeah. what it is. But if we're we going from yeah. A to B with purpose, then let's go, Exactly. Right? Yeah. Now, and the pro pilot, I mean, I don't think there's one airline anymore. I think Delta was the last airline or one of the last airlines to have that college degree requirement. Mm -hmm. and they've dropped it. Yeah. That pilot shortage now dictates... I mean, I, yes. I, I know so many people without college degrees mm -hmm. or people that maybe, mm -hmm. maybe, um, so like Kevin, for example, he went to a two-year college. He mm -hmm. went to a, a junior college and got an associate's degree, yep. but he got all of his ratings and got in, mm -hmm. you know, and came out of it with a lot less student loan debt yeah. than the four-year college yeah. degree. So that's another avenue to look at as well. 100%. You know, so for us in Oklahoma, what we realized, um, it was about 20 years ago, there was a conscious decision within the state leadership to go, you know, maybe we should detach our state's GDP from an industry that moves a commodity and move it to a more stable industry, which, you know, us in the aerospace world, we're like, aerospace is stable. Well, compared to oil and gas, right. it's 100% stable. Right. So that was a conscious decision made about 20 years ago, about 10 years ago. We instituted some public policy where we decided to start incentivizing engineers. We wanted to incentivize engineers that were going to go to work in the aerospace industry. So you what need that? a college degree for that. Okay, right. <laughs> but I'm, get, I'm getting to a point, but you're yeah. right. So we're like, okay, and it works. It works really well. We incentivize the, directly the engineer, and we also incentivize the company as well. So we give them a tax credit, both of them each a tax credit based on where they went to school and, and what they do. Up to 5K for the engineer, up to 12,500 for the company. Okay. Per year for those engineers. That worked so well that we're now in the process of evaluating that. We're gonna turn that, we're gonna turn that, that program down, point it down towards techs and AMPs. The That's most logical perfect. step is AMPs. Right, you've got a federal license, right? Engineers, it was it was a little difficult. We had to thread that needle by saying, okay, if you have an ABET accredited program, graduation uh, uh, diploma, excuse me, here's how you qualify for A and P's. It's much easier. You got that you got that blue piece of plastic in your wallet. All right, you qualify. If you're working for aerospace, you qualify. We're we're in the process of implementing that in Oklahoma right now. For the same reason that we are sitting here talking about this, we need to incentivize people to get into this field. Absolutely. And the one thing I love to do is 
preach the me message, right? I mean, I'm, I'm Moses walking around <laughs> Oklahoma right now. I'm like, look, the average wage in the state of Oklahoma is about $48,500. The average wage for an aerospace individual in the state of Oklahoma is $86,400. That's amazing. Almost double. And, and a, you don't need to go to college to do that. You don't. You don't. I had, and me, myself, personally experienced an amazing life long before I ever got that piece of paper. I just wanted to do something different, and that, that dictated the piece of paper. So it, inevitably, it made sense in my career right. path. And that's the other thing we're doing, too, is like, you, these, I believe, my, my belief is that this generation, you have to tell them, hey, look, just because you do this now doesn't mean you're an A&P for the rest of your life. Right. You know, I, I entered this because I love working on airplanes, but you don't have to do this forever. It can lead to so many other things. We call those pathways. And what we've done is we've done a lot of illuminating of here are the various pathways. Get your A&P, go work in a hangar, go work on an airplane, go work in a repair shop for a few years. And then you realize, hey, you know what? I'm really good at running a program. Okay, go back and get your associates then. Now you get the technical base. I mean, you're you're a monster if you know how the machine oh works, gosh. right? And then you can sling the numbers and work the program. From, I mean, you're unstoppable at that I'll point. I'll be honest. I wish I had gotten an AMP mm -hmm. certification. Yeah. Now I, I just don't have the time to do it, to commit to it. I know that it, it's better if you go to a technical school yep. or you know, a technical program yes. to get it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it takes forever, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, I would highly recommend it. I mean, I just think of everything I could do on the Warrior by mm -hmm. myself because I'm ha I'm struggling to, you know, find good A and B yes. to work on my airplane that I trust. Yes. You know. And we and we see that in Oklahoma, you know, and and that goes back to the get the kids excited about STEM. Like, I I tell people all the time, like, go home and buy your kid a toy airplane. For the love of God, please give them a toy airplane and then buy them an erector set, right? Right. And get them into it. Uh, you know, but y y you have to excite them about it a little earlier on. And we need to get rid of the stigma yes. that going to a technical school is somehow lower than going is to It's somehow college. less than. Really, because right. I, yes. I have a friend of mine who went to a technical school. He's the same age I am, graduated in the same year, 2000, the class of 2000, and he went to a technical school. He only came out maybe, I think it was like $15,000 in debt for the technical school. Yep. Dude was able to pay it off within a couple of years, has been making bank ever since. Yes. You know, and like he doesn't have a degree, doesn't need one. So, and, and and that's like the best story ever, right? I've got, yeah. I've got one of my best friend is sitting right seat on a 320 flying out of Dallas for American. My other best friend is working at Delta Tech Ops. Both of these guys are just licensed guys. Guy out of Dallas is clocking 145. The guy in, in Atlanta right now is clocking 130. Yeah, there you I go. Mean, Again, you know, but we're less than because we don't have a piece of paper. Yeah. Change see, the and stigma. I, and see, I think rewrite that's it. wrong. Absolutely. Yes. We need to rewrite, rewrite the narrative. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you think it's going to look like in the short term future for the state of Oklahoma? For the state of Oklahoma, what we've got our eye on right now is because our, our aerospace is so diverse. I mean, we have a, a very heavy commercial MRO sector. We have a very heavy DOD MRO sector. Um, what we're trying to do right now in terms of workforce is, again, we turn up the volume, we're incentivizing, we're, we're instituting STEM. We've got a very vast and very strong career tech. We call it career tech, VOTEC system in the state of Oklahoma. We have 29 of them, 59 campuses of those 29. We have aer aerospace programs at 27 of them. So not full blown A&P, but some type of aerospace, some type of flavor of aerospace and defense. And that's very important. Uh, it's very important because, you know, they kind of, here at Oshkosh, right, all we think about is, is GA, but I mean, there are so many different faces yeah. of aerospace, right? So, I mean, it, it, we've done really well to support them all. What we, what we tend to do in the state of Oklahoma is take a look around and go, okay, who's here? Where's their supply chain? What's their need? And then we strategically insert businesses or recruit businesses or develop businesses that are already there to fill those gaps. And before you do that, you have to do the workforce. Everybody, so the, it's economic development, right? Right. Economic development is workforce development. You can't, you can't just build it and they will come. You gotta have the people there ready, rock and roll before it starts. 
And we've, we've got, like I said, three flight schools, three major flight schools, three others that are there. And like I said, the 29, the 29 career tech, 27 uh, uh, aviation programs, it's going well. We just need to turn the volume up. And that's where the incentivization comes in. All right. Well, we're going to do our best to help you spread the message. Man, I tell you what, come out to Oklahoma. I know everybody's like, uh, Oklahoma? Oklahoma's a hop, skip, oh and jump my. away from us. Dude, I, I live right here. Oklahoma's just right up here. <laughs> so nice. I got you. <laughs> so below the knee, straight up the hip. There you go. All right. <laughs> All right. So thank you, Jeff, for coming on and explaining what, what your state is doing. It's, it's great news to hear that you're, you guys are addressing this huge problem. We, hey. need to, we need to meet the Jeff in Texas, too. <laughs> I'm sure he's probably bigger and better than me. Everything in Texas is bigger and better. Are you kidding better. me? That's true. I don't know. After I don't know. Meeting you, you set the bar pretty high. We'll so. see. We'll see. We work <laughs> together well. Guys, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. And thank you guys for uh, watching today. And if, as always, make sure you visit our sponsors, Flying Eyes. We mentioned them at the beginning. Discount code taking off, all caps, one word for 10% off. And also Colton Mortgage, coltontakingoff.com, MPS Protects. Uh, we, we love our sponsors. We do, and we love you. If you like what we do, please like, subscribe, and share our channel and our videos, and we'll see you all next time. In the hangar.